Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as I record this, we are here just a few weeks away from the April exam. And I just to remind, want to remind you, you can still sign up for the PT crash course if you'd like. This is three weeks away from the PT crash course. And also as a reminder, I run the crash course three weeks before every test day. So whenever it is that you are testing, just just back it up three weeks and that's when we'll start our crash course. So be sure to check that out. You can find out all the details over at ptfinalexam.com. If you want all of our cheat sheets and information, uh, practice questions, everything that you need for just the little tips and hints to get you through the test, go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can get grab a copy of all that. So today I wanted to talk about test day itself. It's been a while since I've talked about test day. Uh, this last few episodes, I've been, I've wanted to do this for a while, but a series on not only the the content related to the exam, but the strategy and the way to get the best score possible with not just test day strategies, but also everything leading up to the test. So today is all about the test day itself. So I've got a few things I want to talk to you about the test day itself, because I get questions all the time about, okay, what do I do in the day right before this, right before the test? What do I do on test day itself? What are some strategies to answer questions if I don't know the answer? These are all the things that we'd like to talk about today in today's episode. So getting your very best test day performance. So there's a few things that you've got to know, certainly high on the list is you want to be well prepared for test day. So what do I mean by that? So clearly this involves having good content preparation, understanding the content, putting it, putting it into your working memory. But beyond that, how do you make your test performance the best possible? So highest thing on the list would be to prepare for the day itself. Now, the biggest thing here is just making sure that you are ready for the the test time. Now, what do I mean by this? So very often and almost categorically, your test will either be in the morning or the afternoon. I know that's no great shock that it'll be either morning or afternoon. But the reason I mention that is because you need to prepare for either a morning or an afternoon test administration. So what does this mean? This means that if you are a morning person, you should schedule it in the morning. If you're an afternoon person, you should schedule it in the afternoon. If you are are unable to schedule your desired time just because of scheduling conflicts at Prometric or for your own, your own scheduling conflicts, you need to prepare your mind to be awake during that particular time of the day. For instance, and it's almost always people who are not morning people who get stuck with a morning test appointment. So the biggest thing is just making sure that your brain is awake and active at that time of day. Now, the best way to do this is to, in the days and weeks leading up to the test, make sure that you are on a, are on a consistent time schedule, meaning a sleep-wake cycle that fits well with your with your test administration. So for instance, if your test is at 8 a.m., you need to practice being awake at 8 a.m. for for several days, ideally several weeks, leading up until test day. The other thing with this, uh, certainly uh, maybe a small asterisk to this is caffeine consumption. So caffeine, coffee, anything you use to give you, get you juiced up and ready for the day. Now it can have a, it's like a two-edged sword. It's got a double effect. On the one hand, yes, it can make you more awake. However, on the other hand, it is a powerful diuretic. And so therefore, you need to be consistent in any type of caffeine or caffeination that's required to get you awake for test day. I guess the the biggest thing I'm trying to say is just, just be ready for this. Don't, like morning of, don't just guzzle, guzzle, guzzle tons of caffeine and then suddenly have to go to the bathroom between every single section. Just be very measured in your approach here. Make sure you're doing things that are consistent and are are working for you. And I guess this is where it's more of an art than a science. You just want to make sure that you are at the proper hydration and caffeination levels. So on top of that, just on that same vein, make sure that you are nourishing yourself, generally speaking. So this is not only having a good sleep-wake cycle, but also having Lots of outdoor time, exercise, making sure that natural light, you're spending a lot of time in natural light. That tends to keep your brain more awake and more active. It also just is good for mental health. I mean, all things considered, it's a good idea to have a good schedule and to be well-nourished. 
Now, as far as studying the day before the test, I talked about this last time, cramming really just doesn't work and it can actually be be detrimental to your studies because it's recognizing content under stress that will actually give you a false sense of security. It'll give you false a false impression of knowledge when you don't actually know the content because it was learned quickly and under stress. And so when you get on test day, you will find that it has just disappeared entirely from your mind. And so what I do recommend, and this is very much a willism here, that I would just go crazy not studying or doing anything the day before the test. However, that being said, I would suggest having relaxed study time during or on the day before the test. So relaxed study time, what does that look like? Well, it looks like studying in a an easy chair, lots of natural light, maybe find, uh, I don't know, some cafe or coffee shop where you can go through your notes, uh, somewhere that's got a couch, somewhere where you can be at ease and go through things you have already looked at, but just making sure they are fresh, top of mind, working memory, that's the key here. And so like what I did right before my test is I had a whole stack of flashcards. I would just go through a few at a time, make sure that I could articulate what it was. These are things I'd already seen before. So it certainly wasn't cramming. Cramming is when you're trying to put new knowledge into your brain that just isn't there. But reviewing your flashcards, doing a few practice questions, especially doing it in a relaxed way, that's where you'll have the your best success with what I call relaxed studying. Now we get to actual test day. So test day, this is where those of you watching the, the YouTube version of this podcast, which you should, you should go check out YouTube, our channel over on at uh, YouTube. You can find PT final exam there. Um, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Test day itself, be sure to arrive early, but not too early. So what do I mean by that? You don't want to arrive like three hours before your test day or te- test day, test time, because if you arrive way too early, you can sit in the parking lot and just psych yourself out and get really amped up and stressed and then you're fatigued and it's just not a good experience. Rather, you should show up somewhere around 45 minutes to at least 30 minutes early to your test. Now, why do I say that? So number one, they want you there 30 minutes early because it takes a while to get you checked in and ready and sometimes there's a line, so it just takes time to get you in. And you certainly don't wanna be late so this is one where 30 minutes early is is a pretty good target, 30 to 45 minutes, certainly not more than an hour. I mean, you, you could get there an hour early, but the trouble again is that you, you'll stress out and be more fatigued than if you show up at a good, reasonable time. Again, traffic conditions will be different. You'll have different travel requirements. There's a lot of considerations there, but generally speaking, you want to be early, but not too early. Now you'll want to bring your ID. You're gonna require two forms of ID and I'll talk about that here in a moment. But the next thing is just be sure to dress well. So that'll be different for different people, but generally speaking, you want to be dressed like you are a business professional. You want to dress in a way that makes you feel confident and comfortable at the same time. I feel like PTs have this down to a just a an absolute science. That PTs, we tend in my personal opinion, we tend to look very professional, yet we are very practical and comfortable. So like the first time I took, um, first time my wife came with us to a CSM conference, so there's like 15,000 PTs running around. She was, not that it was terribly surprising, I mean, she'd been married to me for a while, but she noticed that among all of the participants at CSM, everyone was dressed well, but very practically. Everyone had very practical shoes on. So shoes that... Uh, like no stiletto heels, everyone was just, uh, you know, rocking good sneakers, good good support. Like it, it was impressive the uh, the variety and how well dressed everyone was, yet how sharp they looked. So I I would suggest comfortable and confident in your dress. And then the other thing is to make sure to dress in layers, especially this is especially for those of you who get cold easily. You need to dress in layers because the test center uh, with computer equipment, just kind of the necessary evil is that they have to keep the room quite cool in order to keep the computers working well. And the converse of that is if they don't, then the computers heat up the room and it's too hot. And so you're usually bouncing between either too hot or too cold. And so therefore dress in layers. This usually means a light sweater, long sleeves, light jacket something that you can bring with you that in the case that it's too cold, you can put it on. 
If it's too warm, you can take it off. You want to have that the layering available to you. Again, not like you're going on a winter expedition, but you do want to be prepared in case it's a little bit too cool. Like I remember, this wasn't at a test center, but I was at a conference and I was sitting, I happened to be sitting in a desk that was right under the air conditioning vent and I was, my teeth were chattering and I don't get cold easily. I don't think I get cold very easily. I live in Idaho where it's a winter tundra half the year. <laughs> anyway, I was shivering, teeth chattering because I was right by the air conditioning vent and the person three rows down was like, oh, this is fine. What's the big deal, Will? So it could be just the seat. It could be the center. Point is you need to be ready for the, the variability in temperature that could occur at the Prometric Center. Another thing here is making sure you have good posture. As you sit to take your test, you'll be sitting at a computer station. Try to have good posture. And so as I'm saying this, I'm sitting, sitting up even better myself. Have good posture. Make sure that you are engaged and active. And a lot of people will call this your power pose. This is related to being in control of the situation, usually having your shoulders square, your, your head up, chin up like trying to be engaged and you'll find that that leads to lower blood pressure, improved confidence, good posture is ideal. Uh, during the test, you're not allowed to access any study material and certainly not during the test and definitely not during your break either. Uh, I think I told this story in a previous episode, but I did have a student once that she showed up to the test in a hoodie and she got into the test and was sitting at the desk before she realized that her phone was in her pocket, in the hoodie pocket. And so rather than telling the, the, the staff right away, like, hey, I, I messed up. I need, you know, I need to put this in the locker right away. She pulled it out and started using the timer feature on her phone and was caught and was found out. And the staff looked at her phone. It's like, yeah, there's study material here. And so they banned her from taking the test for two years because of, as she describes, a very silly mistake. And so point is, you're not allowed to access any study material either during or during your breaks during the test at all. And frankly speaking, it won't do you any good because like as you submit each section, you cannot return to it. So even if you did look at it during your break, you would not be able to make any, any changes to any of your questions or answers. The other thing, this is a big one for students, is you are not permitted to bring any food or beverage into your test center at the desk. So you can't bring in a water vessel. You can't bring in a sandwich. No food or beverage is allowed at all within the computer room where your test desk is, or your test center desk is. You are permitted to bring food and beverage to your locker. So this would be accessed during breaks, either before, during, or after the exam. But you're not allowed to take any of that to your desk. So I do suggest, and I've talked about this before, but as far as the food you bring, I highly suggest something that's not just pure sugar, so this is where like a trail mix is good, some protein and fat. Um, just make sure you've got something that'll keep your energy up and boosted. And you also need to stay hydrated, but not over hydrated because again, you don't want to be taking bathroom breaks between every section. So this is again, part of your practice, getting ready, ready for test day to understand how much fluid you can drink and then what type of snacks you need or what would be a good idea for you. Again, this is why trail mix is usually a good go-to here because of the proteins and fats and the nuts and the, and the fruits. But trail mix, a good suggestion there, as well as uh, some type of beverage vessel. Now, often the test center, they'll have a drinking, drinking fountain there. So if you do need like an extra boost of water, like it's no big deal, but you just wanna be prepared for that. I have had this happen before. What happens if there are disruptions during your test center or during your test appointment? For instance, if the power goes out, there's a fire drill, et cetera. Uh, the FSBPT's policy is if the disruption is less than 60 minutes, they expect you to just continue on with your test. There, there's no accommodation made for that. If the disruption lasts more than 60 minutes or there's something that totally precludes you, like if there's like a, a tornado warning or something where you have to be evacuated, Obviously, you will have to, have to reschedule your exam, at which point they'll just they'll send you an email and you'll be able to reschedule afterward. Uh, the other thing that is more common than that would be like winter storm closures, where we had this a couple of years ago, big winter storm on test day itself. Obviously, the summer months, it's not quite as big of a deal, hopefully. But the winter months, you have to worry about, about storm closures. And so again, be sure to check with your specific Prometric Center Make sure if there is a storm coming that you've contacted them, make sure that 
either the test is going forward or it's not. And unfortunately, that's a case-by-case scenario. But if there are disruptions that are less than 60 minutes, they do expect you to just continue on, soldier on with no, no modification at all. And then finally, the last little thing I wanted to mention here is that you'll, as you go into and out of the test center, you have to scan your fingerprints. So usually either your thumbprint or palm print, and you have to take a photo in and out. What they're doing is they're making sure that you're not trading places with someone. They want to make sure that exam security is very high. And so just expect to take some time to get into and out of the test center itself. And again, this is all related to test security. And as you'd imagine, it requires quite a bit of forethought. Just it, it takes time. So on just a note here, I did want to make sure to mention this because I don't think this is, this is a surprise to anyone because this does come with your authorization to test form. But the NPT does require two forms of ID as you attend. Again, they want to make sure that you're not like testing for someone else or cheating in any way. So you have to arrive 30 minutes prior to your appointment. You have to bring two forms of ID. So the first form, your primary form, has to be a photo ID. And the secondary form just has to have your name and signature stamped on it. So as far as examples of that, uh, good examples of that would be like your driver's license, passport, state ID card, something with your photograph. That's your primary ID. Your secondary ID would be like a credit card, an ATM card, school identification card, so like your school ID. What you cannot use is any expired forms, like an expired driver's license or an expired passport. And you cannot use your social security card. It has to be something with a printed stamped sig- printed stamped name with your signature. So these are examples of the primary and secondary ID. So uh, again, and I suppose it would be um, certainly applicable. You could bring your, your, if you had a passport and a driver's license, that's another good example of, of two forms of ID, a credit card or a school ID card. All of those would be examples of secondary ID. So just make sure that you've got two forms of ID in your possession as you walk up to the test center. So that's all I wanted to say there. Just, I I don't want anyone to to get to the test center and and say to yourself, oh dear, didn't bring my ID. You got to have your ID so you can test so they know that it's you taking it. All right. So when it comes to test day, just a few other sundry tips, and certainly all of these could could have a lot more discussion about it. But uh, this is a question that I answer pretty frequently is how do I appropriately review questions I've taken. Uh, For instance, like you're in your section of 50 questions and at a certain point, or you finish the 50, do you go and review all of them? Do you review some of them? So generally speaking, you should probably review a few from each section at least. Ideally, you would not review all of the questions because that just takes a lot of time. It adds to your fatigue and can create a lot of test boredom. So the idea is that you would proceed through your questions sequentially and then very judiciously, again, this is more of an art than a science, but judiciously mark a few of the items, maybe 10 or 15 tops, Uh, certainly not 50, but you'd mark a few of them and then those are the ones you'd come back and review again. These are the ones that maybe require an extra little thought. You just want to make sure you have it solid before you submit that section. Another thing that happens is during the test, you can experience either test fatigue or test boredom. So what do I mean by that? So test fatigue, obviously it's where you're tired, it's hard to to focus, but test boredom can often kick in even quicker. This is where you start thinking about the errands you have to run right after the test, your grocery list, your plans for the evening, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you are reevaluating your focus frequently. Uh, This is just a reevaluation. You ask yourself, self-analysis, am I 100% focused, yes or no? If I'm not, what can I do to become focused again? So this is that refocusing strategy. Very often it requires having, you can readjust your posture, you can rest your eyes for 20 seconds, uh, what I call a mini mental break where you just deep breathe or pray or or do some type of relaxation, relaxation procedure that refocuses you to the moment, to the thing you're doing right now. And then... Uh, you just have to do a lot of self-analysis, especially in the final sections of the exam. So as the test proceeds, you'll have to do this more and more. Another thing is make sure you use your breaks effectively. Now you do get one scheduled break. It's 15 minutes where the clock stops and you can go out and that's where you 
ostensibly you would get your snack, go to the bathroom, get a drink of water. But make sure during the break, you're doing something that wakes you up. So for instance, when I was there, I, I paced up and down the stairs a time or two. There were, there were some stairs in the building. Uh, I've known people to do push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, whatever it is, something to help you reawake and engage with the second half of the test. And that's the key is just making sure that you are awake and alert so that you can obviously not be tired and unalert. You want to be very focused. So stay focused. And then the final thing here is just stay positive. Stay positive. Make sure that you are encountering each question with the idea, there is a correct answer here and I can find it. There is a correct answer and I can find it. And that'll give you a lot, a big boost of confidence as you go through all of the exam. So then as a, just a conclusion here, just to mention that what happens if I don't know the answer to a question? So during the test, it is inevitable. You will find a question, or many, maybe multiple questions that you don't know the answer to. Well, the first thing is start with the idea that there is a correct answer here. The second thing is look for all the clues available in the question. And sometimes it'll be the lengthiest answer option. It'll be the one that looks the most familiar to you. Or perhaps you have absolutely zero idea. In any case, make your very best guess, knowing that there is a correct answer and trying to use all the clues possible to find it and then put your very best guess because there is no penalty for guessing. You just, because there are some tests that do that where they take away points if you don't get it right. In this case, you just don't get the points for that question. Put down your best guess and move on. And frankly, it's if you really have no idea and there's no way to know, then don't even mark the item because you don't need to waste time on something you don't know the answer to. Rather, you need to spend your time on questions that you do know the answers to. So that's, um, oh, what would they call it? Just cutting your losses at that point and making sure you're spending time on things that are, are you're more likely to get correct. So there you go. That's a, a quick review of what you will do on test day, some strategies to stay sharp and focused, uh, when to arrive, what types of ID to bring, what to bring for your snack, how to stay engaged during the test. Um, I just want to make sure that, that you have all the resources you need to, have, to make your test day the best performance possible. And that's really the goal over here at PT Final Exam. As I've mentioned before, I started this, uh, we had our 10 year anniversary last year, but it's been so fun to see people go from, not really zero to hero, but they go from worried, anxious, and testing poorly to confident and very good test takers. And a lot of it's just this fine tuning, making sure not only you know the content, but you know the strategies to make your, to give your very best effort. Because let's be honest, when you are at your very best, you are unstoppable. You are good at this. You've studied this for years now. This is something your patients, they know that they know you, they know you do very well at this. So really it's just a matter of proving it now to the NPT. So I'd highly suggest checking out all the content we have over at PT Final Exam. Uh, we've got lots and lots. Besides the crash course, those of you interested in a more robust course, this is the VIP course. This is the one where we go through all of the systems. Uh, it's a 10-week course, and you'll find that it's the best bang for your buck as far as content goes. With the quantity and quality of content, you will not find it anywhere else. So, all right, with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we have available. If you haven't already, please take a moment, leave us a review, especially uh, just wherever you're, you're listening to the to this podcast. It just it especially helps as we're trying to get the word out. So be sure to leave us a review. Uh, only takes a moment. Just head over there. All, all it takes, like on iTunes, you just go in there, you click rate, give it a star rating, and boom, you're on your way. But it just so, so helps as we're trying to get the word out about PT Final Exam. In the meantime, be sure to check out everything we've got over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. I will catch you in the next episode. Keep a grin on your chin. Happy studying. Will Crane fist pumps all around. I'll see you soon.